Twas the night before Christmas when I said to myself, what book shall I take from my cozy bookshelf? Fantasy stacked each row, not a single spot bare, but which one to choose, I thought, in my chair. A favorite was the obvious choice, a classic, Lewis, Tolkien, Jordan, or Pratchett. But wait just a minute, this decision is vital. I can only choose seven, it's there, in the title. The Blade itself, Gardens of the Moon, The Shadows of Self, or perhaps Dune. Ah, Rhythm of War, but wait, The Black Prism. Only seven to recommend for winter escapism. So gather round as I put down a memory of light. Happy reading to all, now to exit stage right. The season of the Nog. Oh, I'm getting a faint hint of salmonella. Well, it's the end of the year again. It's a time of joy and giving. It's at times like this one when you might forget there's a pandemic out there that's mutating into a more powerful form. Well, anyway, it's 2020. You might think we don't get anything good. Well, I'm gonna give you the gift of seven fantasy book recommendations to read in the winter. The only requirement for a book to make my list is for it to have some type of wintry or chilly vibes. And I'm not gonna mention any of the books that I did in my 2019 video. You can thank me later. Put in a good word with the fat man. I've, I've been on his naughty list. Oh god, why am I still drinking this? But first, why not use this winter holiday to learn a new skill with Skillshare? This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which by now I'm sure you know is a huge online learning community with thousands of classes. Are you a creative and curious person? Well, you can begin developing new skills every single day. Then you're gonna have all these skills and people are gonna be like, whoa, look at them. They got all these skills. If you want to learn about uh, video editing, or maybe photography, illustration, writing, how to read more efficiently, and so much more, then Skillshare is your answer. This logo design course by Aaron Draplin really made me think and gave me a lot of ideas when coming up with the channel's brand new logo, which I'll talk about later at the end of this video. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual membership, and it's always launching new classes. So hey, the first 1000 people to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So don't waste your holiday time, try out a free trial of Skillshare. Christmas comes but once a year, and it's usually this once a year when I reread the story of the destruction of the One Ring, one of the best Christmas adventures. But this year, instead, I decided to read The Dragon Bone Chair, the first book in Tad Williams' Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy. Published in 1988, like a lot of fantasy books of its time, it is heavily influenced by Tolkien. But unlike many fantasy books of the time, um, it is not a Tolkien imitator. It is very much its own series, and one of my new favorites. Now, it isn't Christmas or winter themed at all, but a lot of it does take place during the winter, which is why I think it's a good book to read around this time of year. We follow Simon Mooncalf, a 14-year-old kitchen boy of Hayholt Castle who often has the tendency to daydream and become distracted. The beginning is just so wholesome as we follow Simon as he wanders around the castle. And we get little hints here and there that Simon is somehow linked to what's going on in the background that eventually forces him to leave the castle. Now, this is a slow burn book. In fact, the pacing kind of reminded me of the first uh, Farseer book, where it takes quite a while for any action to really occur. Which makes it difficult for me to talk about without revealing anything, because you don't really know what it's about until you're a good few hundred pages into the book. Now I actually appreciated the slow start, because Tad Williams has top tier writing, and he makes a spectacle of his world building, and the world of Austin Ard is one of the more vivid and memorable that I've read in fantasy. So in my last winter recommendations video, I recommended a story that had a goblin slaying polar bear. I'm talking about Letters to Father Christmas. Well, this time around, I'm gonna recommend another story with a badass polar bear, The Golden Compass. 
Enter a parallel world, dark and cold. We follow Lyra, who after hiding in a wardrobe to avoid detection, does not travel to Narnia, but rather overhears her uncle documenting the findings about a mysterious substance called dust. Not like he's just discovering what dust is, this is a different type of dust. Several events occur and she's given an object called the Golden Compass and is asked to keep it a secret. She begins hearing rumors of children disappearing without a trace and she begins a journey to the frozen north along with her polar bear companion to save a friend that was kidnapped. Now a lot of the content in here touches on themes that most children would not comprehend fully. By the end, it's got you questioning the morals of all the characters. But most importantly, it's got the North. It's got talking bears that wear armor. It's got the Northern Lights. What else do you want? Neil Gaiman writes a lot of good books, but there's one odd one that I don't hear talked about that often. Odd and the Frost Giants. This is such a fun children's book that can easily be enjoyed by adults as well. Actually, a lot of his work kind of fits this niche in fantasy where it's enjoyable for both adults and children. Drawing on Norse mythology and heroic folklore, this book tells the story of Odd, a young crippled boy who goes on a quest to end the long winter and save Asgard with the help of three animals who are more than they appear. It's a great quick read for the winter. Next is a book by one of the funniest and clever authors that I've read. And with that hint, you should know I'm talking about Terry Pratchett. He gave us so many amazing books. Now, I've mentioned his Discworld series a few times on this channel. I'm by no means that well versed in it, but I have enjoyed every one I've read so far. The Hogfather is the perfect read for the Christmas season. It's the night of Hog's Watch. All the children in Discworld have put up their stockings and are waiting for the Hogfather to arrive on his sleigh drawn by four hogs to bring their presents. However, However, both the Hog Father and the Tooth Fairy have gone missing. There's mysterious and evil powers that are working to eliminate all beliefs and superstitions in the world. And it's up to death to save humanity by donning the false beard and a plump pillow underneath red garments, while his granddaughter Susan tries to find out what happened. This is one of my favorites by Pratchett so far, and there is even a two-part mini-series, which I actually did enjoy, though they didn't hit the same quality as the book. Also, apparently they're adapting The Watch by Terry Pratchett, and it looks terrible. That is not Discworld, that's a dishonor to Pratchett. The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison is a very atmospheric book, and there's a lot of cold in this one. There's even a winter night festival. We follow Maya, the youngest half-goblin son of the Emperor, who has lived his entire life in exile, away from the deadly intrigue of the Imperial Court. But when his father and three brothers in line for the throne are assassinated, he has no choice but to take his place as the rightful heir. Now, there actually isn't a lot of fantasy in this book. It's more so a drama piece that's set in a fantasy world. Maya is unschooled in court politics, has no friends, and knows that whoever assassinated his family could make the attempt on his life at any moment. This book is rich in world building and description, but it can be slow at times when there's not much conflict. But overall, it's a really great story that's atmospheric. I feel like it's a great book to get lost in during the winter. The Snow Queen, the original fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. This is one of his longest and most well-known fairy tales, along with the likes of The Little Mermaid, The Princess and the Pea, and The Ugly Duckling. Quite fitting for this video, The Snow Queen is a story told in seven parts. It follows Gerda's journey as she sets out to search for her friend Kay, who was abducted by the Snow Queen and taken to her frozen palace. There's been many adaptations and movies inspired from this fairy tale, but don't go into it expecting Frozen, because other than Snow, they don't have anything else in common. Now, the Snow Queen herself doesn't really have much of a personality, and she hardly ever shows up. But it's her presence that can be felt all throughout the story as a force of nature. This is definitely one you want to read on a snowy day. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik perfectly captures that frozen, shivery setting. Based on Eastern European folklore, uh, the, the whole story takes place during the winter. There's a lot of snow, there's a lot, there's a lot of cold. A lot of cold. 
This is technically a reimagining of the Rumpelstiltskin story, but it is a lot more than just that. We primarily follow Miriam, the daughter of a Jewish moneylender who made some bad decisions, and it's up to Miriam to take over the family business. Eventually, she earns the reputation as someone who can spin silver into gold, which brings her more attention than she bargained for, including the attention of the Stark King, an icy grim fey creature that's this story's personification of winter. This king promises to make her his queen if she succeeds in turning his Stark silver into gold three times over, and he'll turn her into ice if she fails. That's real husband material right there. While we do get some other perspectives as well, Miriam is definitely my favorite character, and I feel like this is kind of the perfect book to read in the winter. I recently had a new logo designed by the talented Salvatore Rotolo, who uses a handmade folded pen for more expressive calligraphy. I am really happy with how the logo turned out, and you can now get it on a bunch of merchandise on Teespring, which you'll find on the shelf right below this video, or you can even get it on Redbubble. So if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support it and look good while doing so, you now got the option to purchase some merch if you so choose. So let me know the fantasy books that you would recommend reading in the winter. Uh, and if you like this video, maybe give it a like, maybe subscribe and comment or even share the video. That would mean a lot to me. That's all I want for Christmas is you to share the video. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Fun fact, no milk was wasted in the making of this video. This is tapioca and cornstarch and water. I did waste an egg though. Well, two eggs, actually. The first one didn't turn out.